Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to <clears throat> me clearing my throat. First thing I do. Great. So today's news, or actually last year's news, this is uh, the first time that we as fans are hearing about it. Um, I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, allergies have been messing me up pretty bad. So <laughs> our Lord and Savior Dave Filoni's new job at Lucasfilm isn't actually new, but fans on Twitter got excited anyway. Of course we got excited because it's the first time many of us are hearing about it. So um, he essentially got promoted to uh, executive producer, sorry, executive creative producer. And what that is, essentially, let me bring it up just so we get all the facts right. The main responsibility of the executive creative director, sorry, not producer, is to direct all creative operations within a company, including marketing and design teams. They create and manage creative strategies to help improve and maintain company image. So it seems like everything creative, the, what I gather from that is everything creative to do with the movies, the books, anything that they want to release has to go through Dave first and he has to give that stamp of approval. So this is pretty big news. I mean, this is essentially not George level uh, of, of authority, but it's getting pretty close. So everything to do with the Mandalorian, I assume that has got to go through him. All these shows, the Obi One show, I assume that everything has to go through him. And I've heard some things that he was on set for, you know, certain things like that during Obi One and and all this. So, I mean, it, this is a great thing for me. I really like this because I'm a big Dave Filoni fan, and I think that essentially everything Dave has put out, I've fallen in love with. I feel like it is true Star Wars to me, and I feel like it really. Uh, continues on the legacy of what George Lucas created. And the reason for that is because, well, George created him, essentially. You know, he he went under his wing. And if you haven't learned the story or heard the story about how Dave got the job at Lucasfilm, it's very funny. And it's very fun to, to learn about. But uh, there's many videos uh, he's made on that himself, uh, interviews and such. So before we go and read some of this article and see what this article has to say, because everyone's covering it right now. Um. I want to let you know that this is a great day, you know, and mind you, this has been in the works for over a year. He's already, I think, had this position, but it's just now that many of us get to know about it because I didn't even know about it. I didn't know about it till I think two days ago. And uh, here we are. So last summer, Lucasfilm quietly promoted the executive producer and frequent writer and director of The Mandalorian to executive creative director for the entire studio. A rep confirms with Variety. But the company didn't update its website with Filoni's new title until this week, which is when it began to percolate and then explode across Reddit and Twitter, as if this promotion had just happened. Well, it makes no difference, because to us, it's new. Dave Filoni just promoted the creative executive director at Lucasfilm. I believe he has more oversight over all the stuff they're doing now. So essentially, yeah, he gets to stamp everything. I don't know if he gets to, like, ex-nay everything. Um... Like if something comes across his desk, let's, let's say the story group creates something. I don't know if he's going to be able to be like, nah, veto. I don't like this. Or if, you know, it's, there's a more of a process to that. I'm not really sure. But this is a really great thing. Dave Filoni becoming executive director is the best thing that could have happened for Star Wars right now. Right now, last year, anytime. So look article goes on to say the excitement is understandable the 46 year old has been a fixture at lucasfilm ever since george lucas selected him in 2005 to oversee the animated series the clone wars which launched in 2008 and ultimately ran for seven seasons yeah ultimately they had to bring it back lucas was such and and apparently uh dave had to really fight to get that back and i think he said that kathleen kennedy fought to get it back too but i am not sure on that Lucas was such an important mentor to Filoni that many fans see the latter as the true heir to the Star Wars mythology. Yes, the creative mind who best understands what makes Star Wars work and what doesn't. After Lucas sold the company to Disney, Filoni created two more well-received animated shows, Rebels and Resistance. And then Jon Favreau tapped him to executive produce The Mandalorian. So I'm curious to see what all these... like. I like reading these articles because... I don't know if I could say they're like Star Wars. These guys are diehard Star Wars fans, the people who write these things. But I mean, it's fun to get with, you know, see what the consensus is about normies. In December, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy announced that Filoni and Favreau are executive producing several Mandalorian spinoffs. The Book of Boba, which is currently shooting and premiering. Uh, Ahsoka. 
and a spinoff, Rangers of the New Republic. Is that still happening? I think that got canceled, right? Kennedy also said these spinoffs, which all take place within the same timeline, will ultimately culminate in a storytelling event. Okay, Marvel style. Filoni's title as executive creative director captures the complicated role of overseeing both individual series and a larger storyline that weaves together several shows. Given Filoni's galaxy size Star Wars expertise, he's also been known to weigh in on other Star Wars projects outside of his direct purview. Like the Kenobi show, I believe. I mean, it doesn't get more important than... Look, people talk about The Mandalorian, Book of Boba, Ahsoka, Acolyte, all shows that I'm super excited for. But when it comes down to one show, like the core of shows that could be coming out, the Obi-Wan show is probably the single-handedly most important show that we're going to get. Uh, it is the most major bridge between... You know, you look at Rogue One, and these are taking third points of view of, of characters that were just introduced to in that movie, and it was such a hit. This is now continuing the story of the main characters in Star Wars, which is something that we never really get anymore. You got it in the prequels, you got it in the originals, and then that was it. Everybody else after that was new, pretty much. Essentially. So, the Kenobi show is really going to be a cornerstone for fans to kind of decide, okay, are they sticking with this legacy of, of the characters and going towards um, what feels right? Or are they you know, completely changing things and shifting over to another dimension, which we saw a lot in the sequels, but whatever. As other fans have also noted on Twitter, Kennedy is the one who gave Filoni his promotion and Disney's leadership has given no indication that Kennedy will be leaving her post. Filoni's new position was seen as one of many promotions that are announced internally but not made public. And it appears the company was caught off guard by the enthusiastic response to a standard, if overdue, update to its website. At one point on Thursday, the site was temporarily unavailable. It's all another reminder that with Star Wars fans, it's do or do not. There is no try. That's pretty cool, dude. That's great. Everybody's covering on this right now. Got IGN. Very excited when Lucasfilm updated, blah, blah, blah. IGN reached out to Lucasfilm to get clarification on this change, and it informed us that this was simply an update to the website and that Filoni has been the executive creative director at Lucasfilm for quite some time now. Dave has been serving as executive producer, executive creative director. Okay, so he is a producer. At Lucasfilm for quite some time now. A Lucasfilm spokesperson said, we simply updated our website. Nothing has changed with his current and future projects. He is busier than ever in a galaxy far, far away. Man, this puts a smile. This puts a smile on my face. I'm pretty happy about this. I, I can't think of someone who's more deserving than Dave Filoni to get such a promotion. What the freak? All right. Thank you. So, going forwards, I guess if something really sucks, we have to blame him now, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, x -ray? How you doing, man? Oh, I'm just trying to survive with these allergies. Uh, what's up, externality? Extern externality? Super excited about this. Do you think the possibility we'll get a new sequel trilogy? No, I think that one's staying and it's done. I don't think we're going to be getting any new sequel trilogy. Um... He is now the Kevin Feige of Star Wars. Uh, X-Wing again says, Filoni is someone we know and we trust and support. This is a huge win for Star Wars fans around the world. I am so truly happy. So am I. And that's, that's you know, you, t you mentioned something really important is that trust. You know, all these new guys that come in there, um, whether they're talented or not, uh, which n most of them are, they just may not have a grasp of what some of us think is Star Wars, which is, I suppose, now subjective. It doesn't really matter because what matters is if we trust their work. And I think not only with Dave's creativity and the things that he's produced with the Clone Wars and uh, the Mandalorian and, and, you know, with John Favreau and, and, and Rebels and uh, Resistance. I didn't watch Resistance, but I know some people liked it. So all of these different shows and projects that he's had um, a creative touch on has really built his rapport and his resume with us and allowed us to trust him on 
I'd say more of a uh, uh, emotional level. So I couldn't be more happy to have this guy promoted and uh, have him oversee all preparations for everything going on at Lucasfilm. Um, it's great from everything from, what is it? Even marketing. Marketing, design teams, operations within a company. I mean, maybe they got their own guys for that, but this is pretty sweet, dude. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> it's great. So let me know what you guys think. Hey, Theory Filoni Hype. Uh, just bought my first ever copy of Heir to the Empire and Plagueis. Can't wait for all the awesome content going forwards. Oh, dude, you're going to love it. Why do you think they hired Hayden if he's going to wear the Vader suit? Anakin flashbacks of Vader outside the suit. <clears throat> Rogue One, but we actually see him. Oh, dude, we're going to see his face. We're going to see his face as Anakin, I think. And we're also going to see his face as Vader. I, Dude, I can't see them not putting Anakin in there as Vader and then him taking off his helmet and like just scowling or, 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 or thinking or, you know, being in his chamber and we get to see his face. The camera just pans around and uh, we eventually see his burnt and scarred face. Do you think we'll get a new Star Wars game, such as a game that transitions from Republic to the Empire and being able to play Order 66? You mean like Jedi Fallen Order? Yeah, absolutely. Sequel's going to be retconned? No, I don't think they would ever do that. Do you know how big of a deal that would be if they did that? Like, I don't think they could do that if they wanted to. Um, what do you think Dave's favorite cheese is? Say Jack to my guy. <laughs> I don't know. So Wesley, how you doing, man? Uh, we need a theory, Funko Pop. Do you think it's possible for another entry of Force Unleashed? Pfft, I hope, dude. You're telling me. Well, that's the thing. It's like you know him and Sam Witwer are boys, right? So could we get that unreleased mall game someday? Maybe. Could we get Force Unleashed three as like a Legends game? I don't know if they would be down to do that. I know, I, I mean, they're here to make money, so why not? That'd be cool. I'd be down with it. I'd be down with them making like a whole Legends line of games. Like, yo, this stuff doesn't fit in our new canon, but you know what? We're just going to create it anyways just because we know you guys like it and it sells. I'd be fine with that. But just don't think, you know, don't put it in your in your canon timeline. I'm like, all right, whatever. I will anyways, but no, who cares? I love that we actually have a Star Wars mind at the helm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what X-Wing X touched on was that we trust the guy. You know, Filoni is a worthy apprentice to the Master Lucas. He literally is. I'm going to burst into tears when they show Hayden. Yeah, me too. And my face will be posted all over the internet again. Great. On behalf of everybody. <sighs> and you know what? Maybe 1313 now will be... Uh, Back in production, I mean, it was pretty much complete. And if you don't know about 1313, the, go look at it on YouTube, man. It's it's a game that was uh, pretty much almost done. And um, for some reason, when Disney bought Lucasfilm, they scrapped it. I guess it didn't fit with their story. They wanted to create their own stories or something like that. Who knows? But um, it looked like a really, really fascinating game. See how it goes. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to go blow my nose because my allergies are quite terrible. Um, I just wanted to give my take on this and uh, let you guys know what I think and hear some of your uh, thoughts too. And I love you guys. I'll catch you on the gaming channel. I'm probably going to go stream in a little bit. Just going to take my dog for a walk and then, uh, yeah, see you guys in a bit. Later. Oh, and I got a sick theory coming up for you. No, not a theory. Uh, no, that's Tuesday. I got a, a video coming out for you guys tomorrow that you may enjoy. See you later.